Hello, my name is Ben Stagenga and I'm a field biologist with the Orian Society. The Orian Society is a conservation nonprofit and we focus on conserving reptiles and amphibians and the ecosystems that they need to survive. Uh, if you're familiar with the Orian Society, you're probably also familiar with some of our, uh, our flagship species that we work with, such as the Eastern Indigo Snake, which is the entire reason why the Orian Society exists. You may also be familiar with the spotted turtle and the wood turtle. We've got programs, um, research projects focused on those species. Um, and then we've also got programs focused on the timber rattlesnake and the eastern hellbender in, in the southern Appalachians. And those are the things that we are known for. Um, however, what most people don't realize is we do a lot of other conservation work kind of behind the scenes and on the side. And uh, to demonstrate that, um, I've got this Florida pine snake. Now while we aren't working with the Florida pine snake specifically right now, uh, what we can do is take data and possibly some samples, uh, such as genetics or snake fungal disease samples, and pass that on to our fellow scientists who are specifically working with these snakes. So in that way, we're making little contributions to other vital research going on at the time. Now while we're out, doing our research, uh, for example, I'm working with spotted turtles right now, looking at their reproduction. Uh, I'm encountering many other species. Now when I'm doing that, I may observe something new or something unique, and so uh, we may get to publish little natural history notes or publish county records. Now we've actually got a couple papers in the works right now. Uh, one will be adding a lot of new county records for the state of Georgia where we've observed animals in new places. And then we've got a couple um, little natural history notes regarding some of our aquatic salamanders and parasites and uh, new information about their reproduction. So very exciting stuff and while they're, they seem quite small, but we're just filling in the gaps of knowledge. And in the long term, that could be very beneficial for those animals' conservation. Now you don't have to be a professional biologist or publishing papers to contribute to conservation. Uh, one thing you can do is just simply uh, go outside and submit your observations of local reptiles and amphibians to a citizen science initiative such as HerpMapper or iNaturalist. Uh, all those observations go to a database that can then assist scientists and conservationists um, as they uh, do on the ground conservation. Now, I know we're all spending a lot more time at home, and so what you could possibly do during this time is focus on making your yard a little bit more inviting to our native reptiles and amphibians. Uh, many of these species require places to hide, so adding some sort of structure to your yard, whether it be in the form of uh, rocks or logs, woody structure, or just native plants. Um, and, and plants are an important uh, building block for any healthy ecosystem, so planting some good native plant diversity is always a plus. And then possibly consider putting in a small artificial wetland, uh, just using a, a plastic pond liner, uh, making sure there's a water source on your property uh, that could invite amphibians, uh, possibly frogs to come breed in it, um, or it could just provide a good source of water throughout the hot summer um, for, for snakes and other animals. Uh, so all these little things, they may seem small, um, but if enough people do them, uh, they have the potential to make a really big impact. Now one of the last things you can do is support conservation organizations and initiatives, such as the Orient Society, who work year-round at preserving imperiled, um, imperiled species and habitats that they need to survive. Um, and go ahead and share us with your friends and your family. Um, a lot of people don't realize that these animals, that we even have these animals, and they also, and then they don't realize that they are in need. So uh, getting the word out is very, very important. And one good way to do that is to bring your friends and family out to seaweed. Uh, we'll have a whole tent full of these special animals, a lot of the animals that we work with on a regular basis, as well as some of the common native animals that you may see in your backyard. Uh, we'll also have a large portion of our staff there to talk to you. We'll have 
uh, live animal presentations. So it's a really good way to get to know us, to ask any questions you might have, and learn a lot about the conservation needs here in the U.S. and what we're doing to address that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone there. In the meantime, I hope everyone's taking care of themselves and uh, staying healthy. And uh, i just like to urge you to, to get outside, enjoy nature, uh, enjoy the native wildlife that we have right in our backyards. Um, it'll definitely make this time a little bit more enjoyable.